हाई गाइज फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माई क्रेजी अपडेट्स Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Isuzu D-Max V-Cross and this is the 2018 version the facelifted model and let's quickly open the engine bay right away. So, it doesn't get hydraulic struts, but you can see the engine bay has a lot of space to put in a bigger engine because globally it does get a bigger engine as well. So, over there you can see there's insulation, but that doesn't work. and the face lifted model well it's got a lot of chrome the grill is completely chrome with isuzu over here i mean the isuzu badging or logo over here and the headlight gets a projector setup as well over here we also get the fog lamps meanwhile there's a single projector in this car not dual projectors led drls and massive amount of ground clearance it's actually the looks of this car which is the reason why it sells although the tires are very small for a car of this size or character So we have we get 265 70 16s and come on I mean these wheels look really very small on this car but you can see there is so much space over here obviously suspension has a lot of play but it's really the ground clearance which is very impressive on this vehicle meanwhile this chrome treatment over here as well on the outside rear view mirrors v cross written over here you get a side step as well again chrome 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 I mean it gets roof rails and these are functional roof rails by the way So over here as well you can see the chrome handles these are the pull out yeah anyways what's most important is that this car is actually a trailblazer so in certain areas it looks like a trailblazer at least in terms of the aesthetics in terms of the exterior design including the interior dashboard also will remind you of the Chevrolet trailblazer but it will not remind you because nobody really remembers the Chevrolet trailblazer anyways as you can see over here it says 4x4 but over here there's a large loading bay but the problem is that you know there's a lot of bird poop over here which is always going to happen because obviously india is full of good birds who like to poop anywhere so we have you get a camera and this opens like this and over here loading lip is very high but there's a lot of space now over here i have just got inside and as you can see there is decent amount of space to keep your stuff i mean carrying cycles and all is not a big deal at all but you know you might as well cover this up so that way you know if you keep stuff it will not get stolen and yeah it's a massive car the length is absolutely maddening over here but hey that is the real usp of this car it can scare anyone silly the amount of space on offer is just absolutely insane so led tail lights and yeah the tail light is led not really the indicators are the reverse lamp I meanwhile well, the ground clearance is supremely impressive there's so much clearance i mean the ground clearance is like massive and there's the spare wheel which happens to be an alloy and of the same size you can see it gets leaf springs and from the side it is just endless so This is the fuel lid placed over here and yeah honestly it's really the design of this car which is so impressive let's quickly get into the rear the door isn't very large or wide as such and there isn't much space on offer and especially the seats are very upright extremely upright but you know what you can flip this seat forward yeah and keep stuff over here as well although you know if you could you know extend stuff from here to inside here that would have been great Meanwhile over here we get a center armrest as well no cup holders over here as you can see there isn't much amount of space on offer especially it's really the upright seat which is kind of very uncomfortable over here so it gets a magazine holder doesn't get scooped out seat back there is a decent amount of headroom on offer seats are comforted back support is good but underneath support is extremely poor legroom and knee room is kind of average over here not really great door pockets aren't large enough either but everything feels really very rugged The kind of hard plastics used in this car honestly I've never been in any car which has such bad plastics is really very hard and I can see the screw has come out and this car has done hardly 4000 km so not the best build quality I mean yes it is functional it is rugged but it could have done with better quality all around which disappointingly it doesn't as you can see power window switch is over here and this is to lock and unlock the door as well as the window lock which serves as a child lock anyways The driver seat gets 6 feet adjustable power adjustable yes electric adjust over here and over here we have buttons for controls of the outside rear view mirror in order for you to adjust it over here also you get a cup holder yeah that is the cup holder over here 
Meanwhile, you get space to keep stuff. Rather, coins over here. This is to open the hood. This is to open the fuel lid. Although there is this amount of space over here, there is not a proper dead pedal over here. You know, there's space to keep stuff over here. Who keeps stuff over there? And this is obviously the keyhole. So, traction control button has been placed over here, hidden from the side. You really can't see it when driving. It's kind of sad. So, ergonomically, it's not that great. But then again, Chevrolet has been involved in making the design of the dashboard. So, you really can't expect much ergonomics in this car. Anyways, the seat is comfortable. The front seat is actually quite comfortable over here. And there are twin cup holders over here. There's space to keep stuff over here. There's a cigarette lighter over here. And another front center armrest. There's space as well. The glove box isn't that big over here. But it gets twin glove boxes. There's one over here as well. Again, it doesn't have much space on offer here. But you get a charging port over here. A 12 volt charging port. Meanwhile, over here, there's another cup holder. And this cup holder on the side is Events is actually functional in order to cool your drink as well so it doesn't get an auto dimming inside your view mirror there's a sunglass holder over here there are lights placed over here which operate like this meanwhile over here you get a mirror but there is no light and over here you don't get a mirror not a light a car costing 20 lakhs not having that really disappointing the dashboard feels nice but too many hard plastics in fact everything feels so hard yeah it's good for ruggedness but honestly for a car of this price i expected better quality now obviously you have to climb inside the car that's why there's a handle placed over here and let me quickly turn on the vehicle so here we go it does a full swipe all the way and these are actually the controls for the lights and this is the control for the wipers let's use the wipers right away yeah they do a decent job four sprays come on to the windscreen so yeah they work pretty well okay there's a sign over here it says do not operate when this tag is not being used keep it in the storage compartment still more when there's no storage compartment keep it in the operation manual case i just think this is just a funny sticker it has no meaning whatsoever this is the hazard light switch over here these are the controls for the air conditioning it gets a climate control air conditioning air conditioning works quite well it also gets a reverse parking camera yeah that is the reverse parking camera which gets guidelines but they are not adaptive it also gets reverse parking sensors and the audio system of this vehicle is a decent it isn't really great let's play an audio right away actually the audio quality is quite lackluster not worthy of a car of this price anyways it gets cruise control these are the buttons for the cruise control these are actually the buttons for the audio system and over here we get a simple multi-information display which shows you the trip meter along with the odometer temperature meter fuel meter and what is the outside temperature it says 21 degrees and on the left we get a tachometer on the right we get a speedometer telltale lights are positioned all over the place and if i want to get through this menu i need to press a button on this lever so here it's telling me what is the instant fuel consumption and what is the average fuel economy which happens to be 9.5 kilometers per liter what is the range 5 10 kilometers on a full tank which is not bad and what has been the average speed how much distance has been covered since i've tripped it and what has been the time while driving and you can then get into select mode and stuff like that so yeah decent amount of information but aesthetically it is very plain and average it doesn't really have any sort of flamboyance but again then you can't really expect from a car of this size or character because it's a pickup truck at the end of the day and for a pickup truck yeah there's a lot of creature comfort because the seats are actually quite comfortable yeah under thigh support could have been better it's better at the front at the rear there's absolutely no under thigh support whatsoever so guys i think it's time to start driving here we go but before we get going i need to tell you about the ridiculous panel gap over here you can see there's a massive gap over here it just doesn't align i don't know how a japanese manufacturer can actually make something with such a panel gap anyways as you can see this is the control for the four wheel drive system so it's in too high you can get into four high or into four low for which you need to push it as you can see the care lever yeah it is vibrating it is actually vibrating the gear lever of the car is vibrating which is surprisingly shocking that's it guys let's go all right let's go turning on the car it does a full swipe like i told you earlier air conditioning off traction control off and we are all set to go now usually i would actually show you straight line acceleration but over here let's do some corners shall we so here we go now this is a hydraulic assisted steering which kind of feels heavy at lower speeds but okay there is driver training happen let's see if i can do some slalom tests or not yeah do i need to care about stones this is a weak cross i can just drive over them anyways yeah i just drove over them anyways here we go so this is a hydraulic assisted steering Wait. yeah light aa to rahi hai corner mein theek hai na ne ha this is a hydraulic assisted steering and yeah it is very heavy at lower speeds and it doesn't weigh up much at high speeds in fact in order to take a u turn now you have to keep moving the steering a lot there's a lot of lock involved around the corners there's a lot 
lot of body roll a massive 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 amount of body roll obviously this isn't a vehicle for the corners but that said in terms of refinement yeah it becomes very smooth once you get going driving the motor all the way for an half thousand rpm and off we go little bit wheel spin on offer and yes the motor isn't very refined as such because it makes a lot of noise it kind of feels very industrial and that is a problem you know because once you get going initially yeah you can feel a lot of vibes on the gear lever and everywhere else as well and the refinement i mean it feels very coarse as well but thankfully it settles very nicely and kind of smoothens out as well now this is a 2.5 liter diesel engine which produces 136 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque zero to 100 kilometers per hour takes around 14 and a half seconds and although the power band isn't very wide there's ample amount of grunt for both city as well as highway driving but you know in the city because of this heavy steering it does take some effort so let's launch once again revving the motor and off we are so by default it is in two wheel drive mode which happens to be the rear wheel drive mode obviously you can get into four high as well and it's a very capable vehicle off road now obviously it is underpinned by a ladder frame and it gets leaf springs at the rear so yes it's very robust and built to last but then the problem is that you know the ride quality is in great firstly the suspension is on the softer side so the rear bounces a lot unless and until you put a lot of weight there so if you buy this vehicle i suggest buying some sandbags and placing it in the boot in order to get some stability but then yeah you're going to rob away the power to weight now the engine actually revs all the way to four and a half thousand rpm almost and it's very boomy it becomes very noisy post 3000 rpm it has no grunt in the top end either but then this engine is all about low end punch and in that sense it really excels a lot as you can see performance is quite impressive for a car which weighs so much but i I was expecting better handling firstly it doesn't remain stable at higher speeds and it does bounce a lot yeah at low speeds the suspension does a great job but as you pile the speeds up yeah there's a lot of bounciness on offer and it could have done with more sure footedness the steering also isn't that great you know it doesn't offer much feel and feedback and at higher speeds you really don't know where the car is pointing as such of course it's a very heavy car although the grip from the tires is very good and you know around the corners unless and until you push it really crazily the tires won't really screech that much and in terms of braking performance yeah the brakes offer sure ported stopping power but the abs is just too sensitive you can see yeah it actually screeches the tires <laughs> yeah it does wheel spin a bit so the gearbox isn't smooth shifting actually the problem is the throw is just too long but the clutch is on the lighter side which is the good thing the problem i have with the v-cross is that we don't get a good engine in india although isuzu is actually known for its engines in india unfortunately we are getting this 2.5 liter diesel engine which was also there in the pre facelifted model it's not that great i mean okay fine it is doing the job but at this price i expected a better engine now obviously globally they have better engines on offer there's also 1.9 liter now this car has actually got another up update globally which has hasn't come to india yet that 1.9 actually produces more power as well as torque and you really need a six speed over here you also need an automatic unfortunately none of them is present in this car and off we go so should you buy a isuzu v max d cross long name i know sorry it's d max v cross not v max d cross <laughs> anyways should you buy one well when this car was first launched it was very attractive because the pricing was attractive and of course you know the looks and the road presence made it a very appealing proposition especially for off-road enthusiasts because it's a very capable car off-road however the price has risen drastically and creature comforts aren't that great isuzu's dealership network is also wafer thin so at rupees 18 lakhs for the standard variant and rupees 20 lakhs for this high variant i find it quite expensive for what it offers now obviously all these prices are on road mumbai but for this price i definitely expected more to sum up i would say that you should look at buying this vehicle if you want the massive road presence of this car and most importantly you should buy this vehicle if you have other vehicles in your garage this is like a lifestyle vehicle this is like a weekend vehicle probably to carry a lot of stuff maybe your cycles for the weekend journey out for some fitness exercise or just to make a statement just to decimate roads or i mean honestly as your only vehicle the v-cross doesn't make any sense whatsoever you're better off getting an mux if you really want an isuzu so guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye